In this week's video, I want to tell you about my experience in Yeshiva in Yerushalayim. I went to Aisha Torah Yeshiva in Yerushalayim uh, for a month. I took a month off of work and I went to Yeshiva. And my main objectives in the Yeshiva was so that I could learn how to learn. Because a lot of us converts don't have the basics that you get in a Jewish school. That's why normally our Hebrew isn't that good um, and our general um, knowledge of how to learn. Like, how do you learn the Talmud? I mean, how do you go about learning the Talmud? Where do you start? How does the page work? Um, general things like that. That was one of my main goals in Yeshiva, was so that I would know how to learn. My second objective in Yeshiva was so that I can say I've been to Yeshiva, that I know what the Shiva world is like, and that I can in that way relate better to other people that's been to Yeshiva. Most born Jews that is religious go to Yeshiva right after school for about two to four years, depending on where they're holding. And it's almost like a tradition. It's something that you can connect with, you know, when you're in a social environment, which is Shiva that you go to, um, and then you start asking, you know, is that rabbi still around? Um, it's just like something to make you integrate better into the Jewish community, as well as a great learning experience. Now, in this video, I would include some of the clips that I took within the yeshiva. Now, in the yeshiva, you are very busy learning. <laughs> a packed day. I mean, our day started at 7.30 when it was Shachris, where we prayed the morning prayer. And right after that, we had some breakfast and then the learning started at 9. And we studied all the way from 9 till 1. At 1, we had lunch for an hour. Um, just after the lunch break, um, we prayed Mincha, the midday prayer, and then we learned until 6.30, and then we had dinner, and then we prayed Marev, the evening prayer, and then we learned until 10.30. So, a lot of learning. Basically, about 12 to 14 hours of studying the whole day. And there's various classes in the yeshiva. So many people tell me when I tell them I was in yeshiva for a month and we were learning 12 to 14 hours a day, they say, sure, that's a, that's a lot of hours. And they think it's quite boring, but it's actually very interesting. I mean, we started in the morning shul, we had uh, Gemara classes. So we did Perak 7, which Perak 7 of Brachot. And... Um, so we basically learned how to learn. I was in the foundations class um, in Aisha Torah. So you get different levels of students, obviously within the yeshiva. You get essentials. This is basically people that is brand new to Judaism and they're learning, is there God? Um, is there free will? What's the purpose of life? Um, these concept ideas that I, Baruch Hashem, have already finished. And then you get foundations, which is how to learn. So then you start to learn Gemara and the Prophets, um, Mitzvot, uh, general subjects that you're interested in, Hebrew, prayer, um, and how to learn. And then after that, you start to learn more in Chavruta, one-to-one, um, and you do more Gemara. 
that's the basic structure of Aisha Torah and every yeshiva is different um, but I really enjoyed it like I said in the morning we had Gemara from 9 till 12 um, and then we had a class on the depth of mitzvot you know why do you put on um, tzitzit and going more into the Kabbalah of it um, the Jewish mysticism and after lunch I had a Navi class a class on the prophets um, and then I had a, um, another Gemara class which was for an hour then I had Upan which is uh, Hebrew classes that was also hosted within the yeshiva for another hour and then I had a class on prayer for an hour and at night I studied with two Bacharim um, two guys that's, that's been studying yeshiva for eight years and with them I learned so whatever, whatever topic uh, came to mind. So we discussed quite a few controversial topics and I loved it. Um, so that was basically my yeshiva experience. <laughs> convert go to yeshiva now i obviously finished conversion so i'm a full halachic jew um, my baidin is recognized in the state of israel something i checked before converting otherwise you run into issues as soon as you want to go to israel and um, the short answer is that most yeshivas in israel want you to be finish with your conversion before they will take you into the shiva and this is due to several issues with converts number one is that um, in a yeshiva everyone is assumed jewish and when prayers are happening or um, kaddish is being said as long as there's 10 people they say kaddish or the minyan's complete well, if you're not jewish um, then obviously they will be counting you and then all the prayers that would be said would be in vain. And this is the big issue for the yeshiva um, with converts. The other issue with converts is wine. Now most of the wine in um, Israel is non movishal meaning it's not been boiled. Now if a convert and if the wine bottle is open and a convert were to move this bottle then no Jew can drink from it. And this is due to uh, an issue uh, in the past where non-Jews were mainly idol worshippers and they used wine for their services. And we as Jews try to stay away from idol worship or Abu Dazara. And this is why um, that is an issue with non-Jews. So I actually asked uh, the yeshiva, Aisha Torah, would they, would they accept someone that is close to finishing um, their conversion? Um, and they told me, due to all these issues, they are not. Um, and this is because there's a big issue, obviously, like I said, with the minyan, with touching non movishal wine. Um, and then obviously the main concern is embarrassing someone in public, which is a very big sin in Judaism. And if there were a non-Jew within the yeshiva, even though he is busy converting, but he hasn't finished yet, and he were to touch the wine because maybe he didn't know or uh, it just happened to be, then 
this non-Jew would be embarrassed in public and this is obviously what the Shiva is trying to avoid. Um, I have heard um, from some other yeshivas in Israel that do accept converts, um, but unfortunately I haven't found a name. But some people have told me that the easy yeshivas that do accept converts, and if I'm not mistaken, mistaken or Shemayach uh, might be one. Now, if you are a female convert converting uh, to Judaism, can you then go to yeshiva? And the reason this is an added question is because women do not count in a minyan. So they do not have the issue of embarrassing someone when they walk into a minyan and there's 10. Now they are number 10, but they're not Jewish, so they have to step out. So they don't have that whole issue. So in Israel, most of the midrashas, which is a woman yeshiva, would take a convert, someone that's not finished their conversion yet, but on the process, they would happily take a convert. The whole, I've asked uh, the one midrasha, and they told me that um, the whole wine issue is also resolved um, by telling the convert before they come they shouldn't touch any wine, um, regardless if it's non shell or shell, um boiled or non-boiled, um, so that they wouldn't be embarrassed in public. Which yeshiva should you choose? Now for me this was quite a struggle. Um, I applied to a few yeshivas and Baruch Hashem I was accepted in all of them. I applied at Or Shemayach, um, the center program. Um, unfortunately, they told me that I need to come for six months and I could only come for a month. Now, I've heard from someone else that's also a convert that finished conversion that they actually accepted him, but he's much older, to come for a shorter time. Um, but to me, they said I must come six months and that didn't really work for me. Um, I also applied at Chappelle's. Chappelle's did accept me and they were quite good on email and stuff, but uh, apparently there Rosh Hashiva wrote a letter against Rabbi Mizrahi, which is the rabbi that I follow, so I don't want to go to Yeshiva that's against one of the main rabbis that I follow. So I decided not to go to Chappelle's. And obviously there's a lot of politics within Israel, even between yeshivas, and I didn't really want to get involved in that. Um, and I was accepted into Aisha Toro, which is very accommodating, and I would highly recommend Aisha Toro. Um, there is a lot of converts in Aisha Toro. Um, I remember in the one class that I was sitting, we were about 10, and four of us was converts. Um, this is now people that's already finished conversion, obviously. Um, so they're very open to people that has finished conversion. Um, everything is in English. Um, so you obviously learn Hebrew and you learn Aramaic when you're in the classes. But I mean, all the rabbis there um, speak English. They most It's a mostly American yeshiva. Um, so it's very easy for you to fit in, to feel at home. Um, nice guys, much younger than me, um, but very nice guys. We all got along great, um, great atmosphere. It's in the old city, so you really feel a part of the whole old city. I mean, I davened every day at the Kotel, um, so it was a, a great experience. I would highly recommend Aisha Torah. Like I said, they've got the essential program for people just starting out that anyone can attend. Even if you didn't finish conversion yet, if you're in the process, the essential program is open for everyone. You can walk literally from the street into the new building of Aisha Torah and you can attend lectures free of charge um, if you're going for the essentials program. Anything above that, you have to apply and it's it's a process but they're quite the easy process now the next question that someone might ask is how much does yeshiva cost now it varies that is the basic answer um, but if you are jewish born jewish or through a lucky conversion 
um, there's different rates for different people and it's all all depending on what you can afford so if you can't afford to go to yeshiva please get in touch with the yeshiva as they've got all sorts of programs to help someone out I mean most of the people the guys that was in my yeshiva that was studying there were studying there completely free the way the yeshiva works at is that you can come study stay learn eat everything for free and once you start working um, every Jew should give 10% maser, um, 10% of their earnings to um, worthy causes so the yeshiva is saying once you start working 5% of your 10% should go to the yeshiva um, to make up for um, the years that you have spent in yeshiva so they're very open to these type of discussions um, I Baruch Hashem could afford it um, so I paid um, uh, for a month so a month of staying in the old city you know walking distance to the hotel I davened there every day as I've said um, I ate three meals a day in the yeshiva um, I learned 12 to 14 hours all the learning is with rabbis and that whole month cost me 15,000 rand. Now the conversion is probably then about a thousand US dollars. I don't work in US dollars, but I'm assuming it's a thousand US dollars, which I think is an absolute bargain to stay in the old city. Just to stay in the old city, um, I think it's a great price. And if you can afford it, I definitely think that you should pay and that you shouldn't sponge on the system um, and if you can't afford it definitely take advantage of all the people that's donating to Asia Torah and study God's Torah um, free of charge why not uh, and then if you start working obviously give the five percent of your master to the, yesh to the yeshiva to pay off any debts you might have um, I hope you found this video uh, informative and I hope you are considering uh, going to Yeshiva or to Midrasha. Uh, hopefully you'll finish conversion sh soon and then your next step should be to take some time off at, to go to Yeshiva. Not everyone can afford to go uh, for a year or two years or four years. Um, in my situation, for example, I mean, I'm in the medical field, I own a private practice, um, and the maximum I could take off was a month, and it was very much worth it. Um, and I'm planning to, every year, take a month off um, to uh, continue my learning in Yeshiva, and obviously I'm continuing my learning on a daily basis. Um, I hope this gave you a bit of an overview um, about what happens in a yeshiva, what can you expect, can a convert go, um, and the costs involved, and, and what would you get out of the yeshiva. Um, I hope you all have a great Shabbat. May you continue to be blessed in everything that you do. Shabbat Shabbat. <laughs>